Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And today's a very special video because I have already done a video on Agatha from the Lost Mine of Fandelver. So what I thought I would do is I would run the encounter for people. And this is a Dungeon Master Guide, so if you are a player, you should not be hanging around for this, okay? This is a Dungeon Master Guide. If you're a player, this is the time to leave, okay? And because I have already covered Agatha in a lot of detail, what I want to try and do is provide you with different con um, concepts and material in this video. So what I'm going to um, play out is I'm going to role play the encounter as it is in the adventure. And all you have to do is turn to page... Uh, 28 and 29 of the Lost Mine of Fandelver and it has all of the information there but you can take you don't even have to use this information you can take what I talk about and the previous video I've done on the topic and use that and incorporate that into any of your other adventures uh, that you might be running somewhere okay so let's start off with uh, what we have on the, on the adventure book and I will be doing some slides so don't worry the, the pictures will change the forest grows dark and still as the trail winds deeper into the trees. Heavy vines and thick layers of moss drape the branches, and the air is noticeably colder than it was in the ruined village. Rounding a bend in the trail, you see a screen made from the warped branches of trees standing close together woven into some sort of dome-like shelter in the shadows. A low doorway leads inside. Now, I would read this out, and then I would start asking my players, okay, so what would you like to do next? And when, I, when I'm saying that, I'm honestly, I'm looking for them to make a decision about do they want to proceed or do they want to turn back? Because there is no reason they need to actually pursue this adventure hook. They can leave it completely. They do not have to engage in it in, at all. Okay, so I would do that with your players right about now. And uh, certainly they should be cautious because the band she is around, she just may not be completely visible. A home of sorts is sheltered within the dome of woven branches. It is sparsely furnished with chests, shelves, a table, a reclined couch, all of it is old and of elven craft. So I'm going to stop here. Now what is happening is your players are thinking, okay, is there anybody in the room? And certainly at this point you can have Agatha appear and that would be the most sensible thing to do is just lead on from that description. But you might want to um, provide the players with the opportunity to have a look around and sort of go through uh, the items within the room. Certainly there will be players who want to do that, thinking that there is some sort of loot that they can grab, but that's not necessarily going to be the case. Okay, so once they've pursued that, then we're going to move into the next scene. The air grows cold and a powerful feeling of dread grips you. A cold, pale, white light flickers in the air rapidly taking the form of a female elf, her hair and robes waving in a spectral wind. She might have been beautiful once, but a hateful expression twists her features now. Foolish mortals, she snarls. What do you want? Do you know it is death to seek me out? Now, right now, we are open. This is really, at this point, the direction that we're going is completely up to the players. The players can have their characters flee. And on many occasions I've heard of whole groups who decided that was enough for them and they were definitely leaving. And they just scarpered. Or they can stay and try to talk with Agatha. Um, any character who is rude, disrespectful or threatening is she's just going to scowl and disappear and that's the end of it. She does not attack. There's no intention for this, um, this encounter to be combat in any way whatsoever. Okay, so dealing with Agatha. Now the previous video I did covers that in great detail. But what I want to um, point out 
with regard to dealing with Agatha is that it's close to the um, the Coneberry ruined um, town for a reason because she had a relationship with the Coneberry um, people when they were alive. Her lair is actually set up to give her an advantage, not the player's characters. So it's not like they can just wander in here, take whatever treasure and loot the place, do what they want, even if she disappears. Even if they are disrespectful or threatening and she disappears, it doesn't mean they can just wander around and take what they want. And there are lots of different ways of dealing with this. Okay, remember magic. You're dealing with a magic world. So you can do whatever you like with this. Whether they are shuffled out by a strange spectral force and and pushed out of the, uh, the location, out of the dome, or whether something else shows up to deal with them other than the Banshee. All of those are certainly options. Uh, talking to Agatha is the best option for the player's characters, and provided they have actually gone and talked to Sister Garel, um, they should be able to get hold of that silver comb and provide that as a gift, which gives them automatic success with the persuasion check. Now, I don't like persuasion checks in any kind of adventure myself. I feel like they are sort of taking away from the whole role-playing aspect of the game. So I would suggest not engaging in that. It is much better for the player's characters to rely on having a, a, a relationship and a discussion with Sister Garel and then getting hold of that silver comb. Because that silver comb, giving the silver comb and a, a few words, the silver comb enough should be adequate to get them uh, her interest. And if they do, they get to uh, have a question answered. And that's where we want to go from here. So I'll read out the last little section and then I'm going to start going off book for those of you who are here for off book. The ghostly figure smiles with cold amusement. Very well, as she takes the comb. I know that you seek many things, but ask me one question, and I will give you an answer. So the intention is the players will only ever get to ask one question. Once they have asked their question, she leaves. That's it. But she, she will stay around and talk with them provided they engage with her and start talking about the sorts of things that she's interested in. Um, I feel like this is a good opportunity for the players to actually not so much answer a question, but to get to know Agatha. And if your players are the sorts of individuals who like that kind of concept, then go with it. Don't let it sort of um, stop you from um, engaging in that. Um, now, I know there's a few people who are saying, well, Fred, Okay, even if I go through that, and even if they ask their question, uh, why can't I use the Banshee Whale? The Banshee Whale, if successful, reduces any creature to zero hit points. Now, they're not dead if they are a player character. If they're an NPC, they're probably dead. Uh, but with a player character down to zero, and the DC is 13, bearing in mind, that can take down your entire group. I don't think that is something you want to... It's like um, having the save or die mechanic in, in play. Because it's quite possible without assistance, those characters who are reduced to zero hit points will die. So that's why I don't think it's a good idea. Now she can answer any question, and I know it's tempting for players to come back at a later date and ask questions. I would not allow that sort of thing to take place. Even though she is a very powerful diviner, that is sort of uh, trying to game it just a bit too much. You, If you want to use a combat... In this encounter, even though the you know you feel like the role play sort of deteriorated, or um, you feel like they are uh, scouting around her her home or lair, and you want to scare them off, then use an owl bear or a couple of owl bears. Use a different creature. I would use some sort of um, forest animal or creature. An owl bear is a good example of something that might in fact stay in that location, and uh, the banshee Agatha might. Um, allow them to sort of form like a perimeter around there. Usually there isn't going to be very much living near a banshee. Usually a banshee scares off literally everything. Okay, so that's what I would do. Now, there are a number of different questions, and literally the adventure gives you all of the main points that you can hit if you really need to in your uh, running of the adventure. And I'm not going to go into that because I've already talked about that in length. 
What I will say is there are a number of other things you can do with the adventure which can be switched up once they have completed the, the process of um, rescuing Gundren Rockseeker and dealing with Nesna the Black Spider and you've wrapped up the Lost Mine of Fandelva. You can use her as a, re, as a return character. Okay, Once the main adventure has played out, then you can reuse Agatha at a, at a later date. Now the player's characters could return with gifts, different gifts, and ask new questions, which I actually think is actually a, a really smart idea. Uh, maybe you decide, I'm going to, that book that we started off asking questions about, uh, Bo Gentle's spell book, and you know, who had it, and where has it gone? This might be an opportunity for her to use her divining magic and try and figure out a bit more information so they can track down that spell book for any character who is interested in that sort of thing. Or, if they're having trouble with the spell forge, because the spell forge isn't working very well anymore, right? So, how do we fix it? She may well have the answers for how to fix the spell forge. She should, certainly can tell the players where the spell forge is. Um, and that's certainly only that's only dealing with the first encounter with um, Agatha. But if they were to return once they've completed the adventure, there's a whole lot of information she can provide. And all it requires for them to do is to find a new trinket or precious, um, beautiful item to present to her to ask their question. Agatha would be all for that, and I think that's something you would want to consider doing if you decide to continue with the Lost Mine of Fandelva beyond the scope of the adventure itself. What about Old Al Well? Can she give them more information about Old Al Well and you know what took place there, um, what might be hiding there, why is Harmon Cost digging there? all those sorts of things, absolutely. This is yet another adventure that you can play out at a later date. She can answer all the questions that are related to Old Al Well already, in terms of who actually um, built the structure. That's already been covered in quite a lot of detail already in a previous uh, video that I made. Um, but Old Al Well in itself is not just the end of an adventure. The, there's a lot more. There may be other structures down below Old Alwell in the ground that can be um, either dug up or found and then lead them into yet another adventure beyond what you've already run. So just a, a suggestion for those of you who are interested. Okay, what about uh, something like uh, Harmon Cost? Well, Chances are the player's characters have already dealt with Harmon Cost. If Harmon Cost has been driven off or killed, then you don't need to worry about Harmon Cost. Um, but he can, but she can certainly answer the question that Harmon Cost has in regard to uh, who built um, Old Al Well. And as I said, I've got a video that covers all of that in a lot of detail. What about Venom Fang? What if your party never were able to actually defeat Venom Fang? Can she provide additional information about where Venom Fang has flown off to, or why Venom Fang is actually in Thunder Tree, in the ruins of Thunder Tree. Why is Venom Fang actually there? Uh, all of those are other options. Maybe she can provide them with uh, detailed information with regard to the motivations of the dragon. You don't need to play out Venom Fang as part of the original Lost Mon of Fandalva quest unless you absolutely want to. It could be done at a later date, just a suggestion. Um, the druid that uh, resides at uh, Thunder Tree, uh, Rudolph, I believe it's Rudolph, uh, if you want to ask questions and build that in, she can answer probably more than a few questions about that particular druid, all, all through her divining magic. Lots of different options available to you. You can place Agatha in a different adventure. So, although she's normally restricted to Coneyberry, you could take this character, reskin it, give her a different name, and you now have all of the, the nuts and bolts and mechanics behind a new NPC that you can pluck and place into yet another adventure if you really, really wanted to. What about um, the 
the Wave Echo Cave. Yes, she knows where the location of Wave Echo Cave. She knows the history behind Wave, Wave Echo Cave. These are all bits of pieces of information that the players never get access to, but the Dungeon Master does, which you can reveal at a later date if you really wanted to. If they were to go back and provide her with something, a lot of information they can provide about Wave Echo Cave. What might find find a, uh, a way of taking your adventure from Wave Echo Cave into the Underdark if you're wanting to run something like Out of the Abyss. Um, I would also consider what about can the, the PCs, can the players' characters actually lay uh, Agatha to rest? Is there a chance of doing something that would mean the Banshee would be laid to rest and no longer haunt or um, be an undead creature of some kind? Certainly there may be something that they can do. That's yet another adventure you can run after this. At higher levels, um, something like a Banshee makes a really challenging combat. So, you, you know, if you want to have a combat with Agatha or a Banshee, then this is a good time to do that. But I would do that after they get to at least level 5 or 6. It is certainly still a challenging encounter, provided you know what you're doing with your Banshee. Remember, Banshees uh, aren't restricted to just walking around. They, <laughs> It's a spectral being, right? Spectral being, remember? Spectral being. What about, um, what happens if you raise her from the dead and bring her back into a physical form? A lot of different options available to you. Reuse the character. Yes, she knows who the black spider is. She knows uh, what his motivations are and all that sort of stuff. So these are all things she can talk about with regard to the first question. But she may also be able to, if they were to return, give them additional information about what's actually going on. Why is Nesna actually doing this? And what uh, drove him to um, pursue this particular course of action? A lot of these questions never get answered in the adventure itself. Stuff you will have to make up. But she's a good resource for making it possible to reveal that information. If you're the sort of person who have uh, that kind of interest, if you're a dungeon master who really likes that sort of detail, and particularly if you have player characters, um, players in particular, who want that level of detail uh, in their adventure. They may well want to know why Nesna was doing that, particularly if they killed him and didn't didn't ask him a whole bunch of questions. Yes, uh, Agatha can answer questions about Glassstaff and say that, yes, Glassstaff is in fact Ianu Albrick and answer a whole bunch of questions regarding that character. You know, was he a double agent from the very beginning? Uh, was he just corrupted by time? I mean, all these sort of questions never really get answered. And of course, you could ask Iano himself if you really wanted to, but yet again, often you'll find your player's characters don't have the forethought and decide to wind up disposing of the character too quickly. Uh, Agatha does know the location of Cragmore Castle, therefore she would also know the location of um, uh, the King, King Groll or the Cragmore King, uh, also know the location of Gundren Rockseeker. Does she have any information on Waventor and the Orcs and why they are in this location? Yes, she could answer a lot of those questions as well. But this is just a scouting group. Remember, Waventor and that uh, that group of Orcs, that's just the first initial scouting group. There must be, where there is a scouting group, there must be more Orcs. There might be intentions for a larger tribe of Orcs to move into this area and take over entirely possible. Yet another additional story um, line that you can drive into uh, the Lost Mod of Fandelva once you've played it out at a later date if you really wanted to. Lots of different options. She can provide all of the details behind Gundren Rockseeker and his brothers uh, should you desire that sort of thing. I am of the opinion that this character as a banshee is so well laid out, and particularly since I did so much work with the original um, video, that you can use it, change the name, port it over, stick it wherever you want at a later date if you really wanted to. And nobody would be the wiser. You have no idea whatsoever. And suddenly you have all the dynamics and the personality and the way the, uh, the NPC operates all done for you and it's, uh, it's ready to go. So I'm hoping this video was helpful to you in some way. I do realize that I essentially did read like ch chunks, like paragraphs out of the adventure itself. Um, you'll notice I did not use, you know, an accent or a voice. I just talked it out. 
there's nothing wrong with doing that. If you're running the lost mine of Fandelva and you feel the pressure that you know you have to be operating like um, Chris Perkins and Matthew Mercer, that's not the case at all. Um, your players will understand, and it doesn't actually detract from the whole process. What you've got to understand is when you run a game and you start changing your voice, unless you've had training, your voice will get really, really sore, and therefore you do not have to talk in a girly voice or a ghostly girly voice when you're playing Agatha at the table. It is actually not necessary at all. So I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters if you are interested. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing videos like this, then I have a Patreon page, I have affiliate links down in the description to the Book Depository and Amazon. I also have a merchandise shelf underneath the video, which you're welcome to look at if you like. Uh, make sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.